but might get a purchase every 12, 13, 14. So I'm gonna cap it at 50 and see. And if it reaches say 20, 25 dollars still with zero purchases, then I'm gonna to have to decrease the bid further. So everything is based on conversion rate. There will be always a sweet spot where you will be profitable. In this video, we'll be showing you how to go ahead and scale your worldwide Google Shopping campaigns. Before we get into the video, let's announce last video's winners for thousand dollars worth of courses. The winners here. If you guys want to qualify for thousand dollars worth of courses or consultant calls with me, or if you do, drop a comment below. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Hit the notification bell, like this video, and hit the subscribe button. And every single video, I'll be picking a new winner. And if you guys watch to the very end, I'll be actually showing you guys my scaling tactic. So not only am I gonna show you my optimizing tactic, I'm gonna be showing you how I go ahead and scale my Google Shopping campaigns even further. Let's get right into the video. Okay, as you can see, this is my Google Shopping campaigns for music chess. And as you can see, we have literally nearly 10 campaigns, 11, one for each country. I got US, UK, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Italy, and then I got like Netherlands, France, Spain, Germany, and Switzerland. Right now, these two countries aren't having any impressions, so I'm gonna cut them out and probably replace it with a different country. But as you can see, we're literally spending money in all these countries. It's stuff like we've got to sell from Spain with, you know, that's roughly four USD for that one purchase, which is just insane. Um, we've got two purchases in UK and these are all still optimizing. What I've noticed is that Google shopping campaigns probably take several months to really optimize. Because for example, my main campaign, which I spent over a thousand dollars on, and now the cost per purchase is five dollars per purchase, which is crazy. That campaign used to be unprofitable. And it took a long, long time to really stabilize to this current consistency. And it's really consistent. First thing I want to do is I want to just max this out and put in like a budget of two hundred dollars. I want to increase all the budgets for the other campaigns to fifty just because I want them to test faster and just collect more data much faster. Now, as you can see on our Canada, Mexico, and Australia, and Italy, we spent over 27, 37, 45, 65 for zero conversions. And that's totally fine because we're just collecting data at the moment. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and go into each one of these campaigns and optimize it further. So I'm going to start by optimizing the UK feed, which is getting a cost per purchase of roughly 25 Australian, 25 USD, which is pretty high and unprofitable. So I'm going to go in, go to product groups, I'm going to go to products, sort by most spent, Ed Sheeran got a cost per purchase at 20 Australian dollars, and the average cost per click was 50. So if I want a cost per conversion of roughly, say, $15 max, which is roughly 25% less, I'm going to have to decrease the average cost per purchase by 25%. So I'm going to have to decrease this to so 50 cent times 75%, which means a 25% decrease. That means I have to set the max cost per click to roughly 38 cent. So that's what I'm going to do. Product groups plus item ID. And then now I can go ahead and um, edit all the different products. So I'm going to sort by cost. This is the Ed Sheeran one. Yep, Ed Sheeran perfect. I'm going to edit this to 0.38 cents. So the original max bid was at a dollar. So if I cap it at this, the cost per purchase will be forced to decrease to something that's profitable. So now let's go back to products. Next, I spent $11 on Pirates of the Caribbean and I still haven't gotten a purchase. So if I want a purchase and the max cost per click is 87 cents. So if I want to make sure it gets a cost per purchase at like 15 Australian dollars max, I'm gonna have to cap it at roughly like 0.8. And that's sort of like intuition. I just know that if it's getting clicks at 0.87 and it's nearly at $15, I just wanna decrease a bit just to cap it. And then if it hits say $20 and it still doesn't get a purchase at 80 cent, so I'll go ahead and half it again to 0.4. And then if it spends another you know, $20 and still doesn't get purchased at 0.4, I'll half it again and go to 0.2. But this is just the initial testing phase. And this is Booty and the Beast. We spent $9. The average cost per click is 87 as well. Same case, so I'm gonna cap this at 0.8. This is the Harry Potter music chest. I'll probably cap this at 0.8. 
then that means I want to continue getting cost per click at 0.77 and everything else has too little data and I don't want to restrict the bid and I'll let these run to collect more data but now I'm going to go ahead and go to the next country all right so now I'm going to go into Canada I'm going to go straight to the product group do what I did before where I lay out all the products select them all save without editing bid sort by cost and as you can see, the first item was a Harry Potter music chest. It didn't get a purchase at 16 Australian dollars, so I restricted the cost per click to 40 cents. Next item, Ed Sheeran Perfect. It's at 11. It hasn't gotten a purchase. I think I'm happy with capping the bid at 50 cents. So I don't want the bid to increase any more than 50 cents. Because right now we already know that at 52 cents, it's not going to get a purchase every 11 dollars. But it might get a purchase every 12, 13, 14. So I'm going to cap it at 50 and see. And if it reaches, say, $20, $25 still with zero purchases, then I'm going to have to decrease the bid further. So everything is based on conversion rate. There will be always a sweet spot where you will be profitable. For example, let's say your conversion rate is 2%. Two people out of 100 clicks would always purchase. So that means you eventually want to find the profitable cost per click, where 50 people click, you're going to get one purchase. So you want to go ahead and calculate how much it's going to cost you to get 50 clicks where you're profitable and then you divide it to find out the cost per one click and that's sort of what I'm doing I'm trying to find that sweet spot for the perfect cost per click that will be profitable just like my US campaign that has like a 5x ROAS spending a thousand dollars to make five point five thousand dollars seven dollars spent on this this is a Sailor Moon it's at 84. I think I'm happy at it at 84. I think I might cap it at 85. I don't think it would be profitable if it went any higher than 85. So now let's go to the next country. Mexico. Product groups. Plus. Item ID. Save without editing bids. Okay. Interesting, so let's see this. This is the Moana, $8. Came pretty cheap, 38 So I'll cap this at 0.50 because I want, you know, a purchase around this point. So I'll give it a 12 cent leeway so that even if the cost per click increases, I'll cap at 50 cent because this is sort of the, what I like to look is, I look, like to look at the amount spent versus the cost per click. If the amount spent is $8 and that's sort of the rule, I'm willing to let it run to say $12 for a cost per purchase or a conversion. I'm going to increase the average cost per click by the same ratio. In this case, I increased it by say 31% because I'm willing for the cost to increase by 31% before it gets that first conversion. Next, this is the let it go. 51. So I'll max this out at say 60 and I'm gonna let it continue collecting data. Lastly, I'm gonna check out Australia and optimize that. Wow, $15 spent on Ed Sheeran Perfect. Still no purchase. So I definitely wanna cap it at 0 0.70, 70 cent per click and that'll probably help me get a cost per purchase around $15. Frozen, cap this at 0 0.75 and I'll let the rest collect more data. And yeah, that's how you go ahead and optimize your campaign. And you basically just give it time. Now I did those optimization, I'll probably wait one month before I come back in, collect some more data and just optimize it again and again and again and eventually hit a sweet spot where I just no longer have to touch it. This US campaign just basically makes money automated. Let's check out the products. As you can see, cost per conversion on 10. Oh, Khalid, cost per conversion at 20. So that is expensive. And the current average cost per click is 67. So what I did was I literally halved the cost per click to bring down the cost per conversion. So what I can do is check say last 30 days and check out car lead spent only six dollars so that's fine beauty and the beast also i had to half it i half the cost per click there pay brexa at forty dollars only got one conversion at a average cost per click at one dollar ten so i like divided by three literally the cost per click so this one's already optimized it's not not much more I can optimize to it. Just let it do its thing. And then let's go with scaling. So when you're scaling, you want to look at your search absolute top impression share. Basically shows that in all these products, I'm in the top 
10%, meaning that my current bids are super perfect and that increasing the bid wouldn't make much difference. So for example, if I was really profitable and this was at like say 50%, that means what I would do is I would increase the max bid even further to just bump my product up so I'll be able to get more conversions, more impressions and more sales. But since it's already in the top 10%, I'll just keep it at 70 cent. No point increasing it if it's already at the top. But yeah, look at this Ed Sheeran. I'm getting purchases at like two USD. I think that's like 170 USD per purchase. And I got 53, which is just insane. The rise on that is insanely high. But yeah, that's the whole Google Shopping optimization and scaling. I literally took you guys through everything. This is the international Google Shopping scaling video. Uh, I took you in the back end, I showed you the numbers, I did everything live. This is real optimization that I'm doing. This is the stuff people would save in a course, but I wanna really over provide you guys with some value, and that's exactly why I'm doing this. Question of the day, are you currently utilizing Google Shopping? I wanna hear your thoughts. Google Shopping is currently really powerful and not many people are utilizing it. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and effort that you invest into my channel and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more value. Peace.